there, this is Larianne with Pink Dahlia Soaps. Just a quick disclaimer, this video was not intended to teach you how to actually make soap. If you have never made cold processed soap before, please, please, please take the time to actually learn how to make cold processed soap. Lye is a very corrosive substance and you wanna make sure you know what you're doing before working with it. Here are the oils that I will be using for this recipe. I've included the percentages, that way you can plug it into a lye calculator so that you can make as much or as little as you need. And this is the actual recipe that I'm using. I'm making a pretty big batch of soap dough today. Let's get started. This is completely optional, but I like to add Tussa Silk to my soap. Just go ahead and add it into the water. Carefully pouring the lye. And just in case you're wondering, this is like the second or third batch of soap that I'm making for the day. And that's why the cup has a little bit of lye in it already. While the lye water solution is cooling off, I like to prepare my containers with the colorants that I'm using. And I have a bunch here, as you can see. And I take a little bit of the oils that I just measured out for the soap that I will be making, and I disperse the colorants. I find that doing this just helps mix the colorant into the soap base way easier. And there are no lumps of mica colorant that I have to worry about. I usually always make my soap at room temperature. I've also soaped at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit with this recipe and it was just fine. Also optional, adding kale and clay. I usually add about one teaspoon per pound of oils. And I disperse the clay into equal amounts of distilled water before adding that to my oils. I do this before adding the lye water solution. I did not mix any fragrance oil into today's soap because I plan on using this soap dough in several different kinds of soap soaps that are all going to be fragranced differently, but if you're going to use it all for one soap, feel free to add fragrance. Look at all those beautiful colors. I cannot wait to use them in soaps. Now the only thing that's left for today is putting a little plastic wrap over them and letting them set overnight. And now to make the actual dough. You're just going to unmold your soaps. You're gonna squish it and knead it and work out all the lumps until it is the consistency of dough. If you know that you're not going to be able to knead all of your soap the next day, then just go ahead and unmold it and wrap it tightly in plastic. That way it doesn't dry out and it gives you a few extra days to get to it and knead it into a dough. And once you get your soap to the consistency you're happy with, go ahead and wrap it up in plastic. If any of your soap doughs are extra soft and squishy like this one, don't panic. You can leave it out for about 30, 40 minutes to let it dry out a little bit and see if that helps. If that doesn't help, you can always add a sprinkle of potato starch or arrowroot powder or cornstarch and that will help with the stickiness. And here are all the soap doughs wrapped up beautifully in plastic. I usually throw these into a Ziploc bag and they will keep for up to two months. As long as they're pliable, I will still use them. Well, that's that. Thank you so very much for joining me for this episode of Soapy Things. Feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment below, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.